Hello friends, welcome back to our YouTube channel Doctor's Corner. In this today's video, we are going to discuss about Eagle Syndrome. So, what exactly is this Eagle Syndrome? That is the definition of Eagle Syndrome we are going to discuss today. Plus, what are the causes of Eagle Syndrome? and what are the types of eagle syndrome and uh, signs and symptoms of eagle syndrome and uh, diagnosis diagnosis and finally the treatment of eagle syndrome under this side headings we are going to discuss this particular topic eagle syndrome okay so this topic comes under ENT that is otorhinolaryngology okay this is a uh, surgical condition mainly but what, what exactly is this before coming to the definition I'll just uh, give you the background so this is the skull everyone knowing this so this red color structure which is highlighted in red color it is basically this stylo styloid process okay styloid process so temporal bo in the temporal bone so this projected bony projection it is known as styloid process okay so basic anatomy so this styloid process generally it is about 2.5 centimeter okay generally the size of the styloid process in adults is around 2.5 centimeter but in few conditions this styloid process sometimes the size will get increased okay in which conditions we are going to discuss now so if it is increased for more than three centimeter okay or up to four centimeter then that clinical condition simply known as eagle syndrome so what exactly is the eagle syndrome so in this eagle syndrome what will happen so this styloid process the size of the styloid process is increased that's all and it leads to the compression of the nerves and the vessels or the soft tissue surrounding that styloid process and leads to some signs and symptoms that group of uh, signs and symptoms is known as eagle syndrome due to the enlargement of the styloid process hope definition is clear now who invented this so in 1937 an American otorhinolaryngologist uh, by name Watt W uh, Eagle okay Watt W Eagle so Watt Wims Eagle uh, he discovered this particular syndrome okay now uh, what are the causes of this why actually there should be an enlargement of this styloid process so actually cause is not known but probably the it could be due to by birth okay by birth congenital malformations the size is elongated and as one advances so this will get enlarged okay then so again uh, one more thing is stylohyoid ligament stylohyoid ligament so you know there is a bone hyoid bone here in the neck okay so there is one ligament ligament means a structure which will connect between the two bone so from this styloid process up to the hyoid bone one ligament will connect okay so when this ligament is calcified due to the calcification of the stylohyoid ligament again it will it will act as an elongated styloid process which will causes the signs and symptoms okay or post tonsillectomy that is after the operation of the tonsil that is tonsil is removed the scar tissue which is found may compress the tissues there and it may causes the signs and symptoms similar to the eagle syndrome now what are these types of this eagle syndrome so classical and vascular two types have been identified so what is classical eagle syndrome and what is vascular so classical eagle syndrome is the what i have just now described you that is it is due to the enlargement of the styloid process so if at all if this enlargement of the styloid process compresses the internal carotid artery okay internal carotid artery you can see the anatomical relation with the uh, styloid process so this styloid process if it compress if it gets enlarged this is the normal if this is the enlargement so due to the enlargement sometimes it will compress the internal carotid artery so that clinical signs and symptoms known as vascular eagle syndrome it is may be very critical it will lead to uh, transient ischemic attack or even the stroke also okay so two types have been identified one is classical another one is vascular so what are the signs and symptoms so generally this will occur more in the females okay it is a ratio of threes to one from females to males okay so more in the uh, females in the age group of 30 to 50 years so what are the classical signs and symptoms is there is a pain in the jaw okay so that is the jaw pain then uh, uh, there is a classically throat pain and the people and the patient will complain of uh, dysphagia that is uh, difficulty in swallowing the food and all on the posterior aspect of the throat then the neck pain okay the pain is referred to the neck 
so neck pain then all uh, classically the pain is referred to the ear okay neuropathic pain in the ear and also tinnitus or buzzing or ringing sound is heard in the ear so these are the classical signs and symptoms of the uh, this one uh, E eagle syndrome and usually it is unilateral it is on the one side okay it is on the one side very rarely it is bilateral and the incidence is incidence is actually it's a very rare disease so it just four percent of the population will suffer from this eagles disease and out of that four percent uh, again further four percent will have the signs and symptoms okay if at all if it is enlarged not all will develop uh, the signs and symptoms so out of the four percent again four percent will get uh, uh, signs and symptoms so out of uh, 65,000 around uh, uh, <coughs> 3 to 5 people will suffer from this so it is a very rare disorder but uh, we have to keep in mind clinically if a patient presents with the unilateral pain in the jaw and uh, uh, if and it is more when the person patient is uh, moving the head on the one side and it is radiating to the neck and the ear and on the throat okay so it could be one of the uh, one of this uh, eagle syndrome okay now we have seen the signs and symptoms now how to confirm that it is due to this enlarged styloid process if a patient presents to it there could be differential diagnosis like trigeminal neuralgia or cervical spondylosis there are many things uh, uh, will clinically appear like that so to confirm this clinically we can palpate okay when we palpate uh, uh, the tonsillar fossa generally by manual palpation so generally there will be only no uh, styloid process is felt but if it is enlarged then on the tonsillar bed even the styloid process is palpated but actually it's a uh, this will cause us uh, more pain or discomfort to the patient okay already the pain is there due to the enlargement it is compressing and when you person do this procedure then it will uh, uh, a discomforting thing to the patient then finally the diagnosis will be done by the radiographic techniques like simple x-ray simple x-ray can diagnose the apv when the lateral wave can show the enlarged tyloid process or if it is not visualized by the simple x-ray then even the ct scan can be taken so which can show the enlargement of the styloid process so if the diagnosis is now confirmed then uh, how we will treat this clinical condition so treatment uh, is first is medical management so in the medical management we starts with the simple painkiller like nsids okay so generally uh, if because of the if it compresses the nerves most importantly the glossopharyngeal nerve okay which supplies the tongue muscles and even the posterior aspect of the tongue uh, there is a pain okay so uh, neuropathic pain will be there so it mo mo many of the times it is not relieved by nsids so a course of corticosteroids can be given so sometimes it is relieved with, by that if not then the neuropathic drugs like pregabalin gabapentin can be given or if it is causing severe anxiety or depression some antidepressants can also be given along with that then finally if it is not uh, relieved then the local uh, anesthetics okay local anesthetics can be uh, injected at the site so these are the medical line of uh, or conservative management so if it is not relieved then the definitive management is the surgical treatment so surgical treatment is excise the styloid process that is just remove or cut that styloid process that is the partial styloidectomy okay partial not full styloidectomy so in the partial styloid I mean, what exactly it is done is that the extra piece of that uh, styloid process which is enlarged and causing all the signs and symptoms so this is the normal styloid process this is the enlarged one so this enlarged one is cut okay so there are two routes or two approaches for this so directly through the intraoral route okay it has to tonsil has to be removed and from the tonsillar bed this toilet <coughs> process extra is uh, excised or from the outside that is cervical approach uh, where the uh, the assess is uh, sur for surgical assess it is easy but uh, there is a chances of the scar formation scar tissue is visible as compared to the uh, oral route okay intraoral route and nowadays endoscopy procedures are also available for this things uh, so again how a recurrence rate might be there and the chance of survive that is 80% of the time after the surgery the symptoms uh, will get uh, uh, 
uh, reduced okay and uh, most of the people will again uh, get treated even with the conservative management also if not then tylodectomy has to be done just to summarize what is eagle syndrome eagle syndrome is the signs of symptoms due to the enlargement of the styloid process so generally styloid process is around 2.5 centimeter so if it is enlarged for more than 3 centimeter or up to 4 centimeter then that clinical conditions is known as eagle syndrome then causes it could be be due to the congenital defects or the birth defects or due to the calcification of the stylohyoid ligament and it is of two types classical and vascular then uh, male female ratio females are uh, more suffer uh, means this uh, disorder is seen more in the females as compared to the males and diagnosis is confirmed by the uh, physical examination as well as by the radiological findings and finally treatments is both uh, medical line of management and the surgical treatment so please subscribe our channel doctors corner and share it with your friends thank you